So coming in at number 20 is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Uh, not it's my it's not my favorite of the trilogy. Uh, I still think uh, Volume Two is the best, and um, this I think my major problem is just the the fact that Rocket isn't really with the crew the whole time, and uh, but everything else I actually really enjoyed. I think the the comedy and the direction from James Gunn is still great, and I'm 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 still excited to see. Uh, how this his new DC, DCU is going to turn out, Superman Legacy. I'm, I'm excited for it all to happen. And uh, this movie is just, it's a good, it's a, it's a, it's a nice somber way to end it all. And I do like how they do end these characters by not killing the, them off, which I think is a very like smart and like kind of a surprising way to do it. And just watching this in the theater was more depressing though, just because, not because of the animal cruelty, just because the fact that it feels like this is it for Marvel right now, like, it's just, there's no, it's not, there's like, nothing's going to be like as good as this. But that's mainly because, as people say, it's more of a James Gunn movie than a Marvel movie. And, um, uh, say, uh, it's sad to see them go, and I don't really expect to see Star-Lord come back. Maybe who else? All stations, stop Spider-Man! You? You? Me? Me? Last ride. <laughs> then you might want to buckle up. Yeah! So coming in at number seventeen is Theater Camp. Uh, which stars Ben Platt, uh, the, the actress that plays April O'Neil in the new Ninja Turtles movie, um, and some people who worked with Will Ferrell. Uh, I've never actually ever seen Dear Evan Hansen. I haven't really seen anything with Ben Platt until I've seen this movie, which uh, I, I enjoyed. And uh, I've done community theater. Um, I don't know if I should say I'm a theater kid, but I've never actually even gone to theater camp and... But when I kind of like saw this, I didn't really like, I never, I, I don't really see this as a thing though, but, uh, cause I, when I think theater camp, I just think of a, uh, something in the, in like New York city. Cause I know, cause I know some people who like do theater camp, like in, they go to New York city for like the summer to like do shows. Uh, but maybe I'm thinking of something else. Overall, I did enjoy it. I, I, I liked the, um, I think all the actors did well. The story was fine for what it was, and I do like the mockumentary style. It was overall, it was a, it was a sweet, short time, and but my, my only gripe is I do wish, like, the, the kids had more, like, more, like, had more to do, because uh, the movie is mainly more about, like, the, 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 the counselors, but I wish, like, there could have been a good, like, balance, because, like, from what I saw, they got, like, a lot of, uh, like, talented kids from like who, who have done things like there's a like a kid from like america's got talent who's in it uh and like someone from the 13 movie that i don't like also to add i think they they, they have the the boy from minari but he is like not you don't really ever see him with the cast and i'm probably i guess in like he's a good actor i mean like he's good in minari but he probably doesn't know how to uh, he's probably he probably can't sing and dance, which is you know, nothing wrong with that, because he's just always he plays this like funny agent character who's just always like in the office when he's not supposed to. I'm just saying that it's kind of I feel like they they try to get every like popular kid and they wanted to squeeze him in there, but he never really like does any like uh, musical theater stuff, so that was kind of funny. Uh, but overall, fun fun movie to watch. Uh, if you like theater, you'll enjoy it. I, I got some enjoyment, and it was definitely funny, and I think all these actors are good as my first exposure to them. What's the play? Batman, what do we do? We try not to die. It's not Clark. My name is Kara. I, I'm well, Barry. Barry.
You are the man who gave them the power to destroy themselves. And the world is not prepared. at number 14 is the zone of interest which you've all heard as the the film about the holocaust that is like you know you don't see any of the 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 killings but you do hear it and uh i think it's a really good exploration of why this is one of the worst genocides ever uh, just because of like scenes of just people like in, in rooms being like uh, with this technology, we will we will kill like up to this many people. Uh, just showing how casual they were, they, everyone was, and just like how uh, you had like these like pleasant families, like living right next to the camps where the, people were being slaughtered with all the with like kids jumping around. Uh, I thought there was like uh, I I kind of felt like maybe there was supposed to be some kind of like metaphor to like um, you know like Garden of Eden where they were as they were like blocked away from like all the the real like horror that's going on on the other side and uh just it's just a really good effective movie that i really liked uh it looks great well i gotta be honest though the theater i saw it in it had like a weird blue tint to it and it looked like like a blue like james cameron blue tint to it i don't know what was going on but the movie looked very blue, and I, from, from, from what I've seen the trailers, it does not look like that. Overall, great movie. I'd highly recommend it, but I can definitely see, if you're like a real like history scholar, I can kind of see you getting turned off by it, because it's not, because it's more, it's more of an art house film, if anything, so maybe not check it out, but check it out still. We're brothers. We fight together. We're just getting started. Yeah. You sounded like a leader. I do? Oh, I do! Oh, I sound like such a leader! And you ruined it. Ninja Turtles. You want me. So let's finish this. Guys? Coming in at number 11 is Past Lives. Uh, this is a movie that has been uh, getting a lot of, uh, they got a lot of circulation at festivals and uh, now it's a uh, Best Picture nominee and uh, rightfully so because it's a really good movie and uh, I think what makes it just really good is what I think a lot of people are saying is that it is just a very real feeling movie. It's, it's not a romance, it's not a tragedy. And, you know, it's just uh, these people going through their lives as they, like, connect now and then. It's basically the before trilogy, in a way. And uh, I guess at times, like, I, I was debating, like, if the dialogue of the guy saying, oh, I'm just, I'm the evil white male husband, and... Uh, I was debating, like, is the is like the very aware is the self aware dialogue good or bad? But even then, like, it's just a it's a it's a movie that just feels real. It's like when when, it, when you I think when it ends, it, you're not you're neither happy nor sad. It's because it's just a very realistic drama that's just it's well written, well shot. And I, the best part is just the actors. The actors are really good, and they, and the fact that I don't know that I, I, I can't really like remember what they've been in, makes them feel even more like real people. Like I'm just watching real people in life reconnect, connect, and it's just lands very well. So coming in number ten is M Night Shyamalan's Knock at the Cabin. M Night Shyamalan is a very uh, hit or miss director for a lot of people. I personally like him most of the time, besides Last Airbender and After Earth. Uh, I like most of his stuff. I think 
it is really good what he makes and uh, I love and I do like the story sometimes and when he sticks to his own stuff it's just really good and I think Knock at the Cabin is one of his best stuff and probably his third best film next to Sixth Sense and Unbreakable the the acting in this is really great from uh Batista uh River Grint from Harry Potter who was I don't know if this is like comeback for him but I'm glad to see him in a big movie like this giving a great performance uh I like uh, Jonathan Groff really good after that terrible Matrix movie and I really like the child actress and uh, I think child acting and M.I. Shyamalan films are rare because I don't think there's ever been a really good uh, child actor in his movies probably since um, Unbreakable with Spencer Treat Clark and this one also it looks amazing this is this this and old I think is his best looking movies just because of like probably like the the scope he's using Overall, I, I love the story. It's very it's very tense and keeps you guessing throughout what's gonna happen. And it's a really good thriller and it's like my favorite horror film of 2023. So coming in at number nine, we have Alexander Payne's The Holdovers. Now, I really love the last film that he did with Paul Giamatti Sideways. That is one of my favorite comedies and just probably movies overall. It's just, it's really great. I also love Payne's Election. That is also one of the best like high school comedies and also one of the best movies of all time. Um, the Descendants, it, it's pretty good. I just, I don't think it's as funny as those two. Mainly because Jim Taylor wasn't a part of it. And this one was not written by Alexander Payne because Payne usually r writes his movies. This, unfortunately, was not, but I don't dislike the movie. I just don't think, personally, it's as funny as I was in Elections. But I really do like this movie. I think it's a really good story about these people who are uh, kind of rejected by society, or they just, they don't have, they don't have anyone, and they're definitely, like, deeply looking for some sort of uh, belonging. You know, you've got Paul Giamatti giving one of his best performances is probably this might be I'm, I'm just, i'll just say it's a second best performance next to sideways being his best still uh i i which i hope the academy really uh awards him for this for this because he's way overdue and he was not even nominated for sideways uh he's just he's really great as this teacher who is not even technically a, a real licensed teacher who just teaches at the school because that's because he's always been there since he's, he was a teen, and uh, so he doesn't really. So he, he, that's all he's really got is that school, and now uh, it's just constantly changing with uh, new principles and their new uh, ideas and agendas. Uh, then you got um, Randolph, uh, Randolph the, uh, the the cafeteria woman who lost her son in Vietnam and is just grieving because she's also got no one else she's got she truly has no one left in her life besides her like you know besides some family members she's just she's lost her son because of the war and then uh then you got this student who is just this one student who was who just who like still like holds over for during the break because uh his mom doesn't his mom doesn't really like really see doesn't see him in her uh future in her future with uh, as she's try as she's kind of going on to her new phase of life with her new husband so it's just a group of people as they learn to and the, as they bond with each other and it's it's a very special movie uh but like i said it's not as funny as uh sideways or election but it's still really damn good and i really hope paul giamatti gets best actor and i hope it's not Julia Randolph, but it's it's some whatever her name is. I think she should also really get Best Supporting Actress for this for her role in it because it's just a really great performance all around. Uh, it's really good, and I'm gonna like it. This is gonna be like a big. Uh, this is gonna be like a big thing, a big accusation. But I really think this is the best uh, Christmas movie that I've ever seen since Elf. Number eight is another director uh, in a row that kind of like started in the 90s that I like. And this isn't really like uh, their best work, but uh, Priscilla by Sofia Coppola. 
Uh, I really do like it still, It's but I think compared to like Lost in Translation, Marie Antoinette and Virgin Suicide, it's not, that, it's not as great as those. But I think it's still a really good story about, uh, this, like, it, it's a good, like, introspective of this, this woman who basically just married into fame and fortune uh, with, you know, a guy who was considered the king of rock at the time, the biggest celebrity of all time. And uh, it's just, a, it's a really good introspective on that part. And... I also have to say, this is just a really good Elvis movie, too. Like, I know it's Priscilla, but I, I like Elvis more in this than than Austin Butler in his own movie. Because I think um, the, the actor Jacob Aldroy, I, I can't pronounce his name right, but I, I really like his portrayal of Elvis because I, um, I think he just deeply really does, like, I think he captures this, like, deeply trouble, troubled artist who is just kind of like, like, you know, because the, the, the movie really it opens up with him like still recovering from the death of his mother while he was in the military and uh also captures his drug problems his like also his image problems with like the colonel i think it just does it a lot better in this uh, i think my only like issue with the film is i do kind of wish like i don't know like i debate though if it, if it really should have ended with like just for so long, just leaving him like it should have that should that have been the ending or should have been uh like, I should have, like, should have shown, like, her life, like, after when Elvis died, like, I don't know, I just wanted, I, I, maybe I wanted to know what it felt like when she, you know, when, like, Elvis died, like, what was her life like, that, but, I think it's still really good, I think the actress is great, and the actor playing Elvis, I think they're all great, and I feel like I'm watching them, the, the real Elvis and Priscilla, to be honest, because I think they look, they look more like them than, uh, than, Austin Butler and whoever played Priscilla in the Baz Luhrmann film. Overall, I just like Sofia Coppola's more simplistic, small feel of telling uh, the story. Number seven is Bottoms, a hilarious teen comedy, one of the be one of the best in a while. That is just so absurd, which is why it's great. Which is lesbians. These two lesbian girls start a self defense class for girls at their school just so they can hook up with these two girls and it is definitely really funny i loved watching it and just wishing more high school films could be so absurd like this it's really fucking funny the actresses are great besides the fact that they're like 10 years older than me who is a who and I, i'm a senior and they're there's like these girls that are 10 years older than me playing them a little absurd but the actors are all great. The, um, the the history teacher, the football player guy, who's also an idiot for Brady, who's in this, and he's a lot better and funnier in this. The the principal's funny. Uh, the the football players are really funny. Just the the fact that they have their own like table that feels like that's like a like a at a king uh, like a castle party. That's funny. It's the movie. It's just funny and how like it's just a. Now the end is just, a, it's a war movie at the end. What high school movie ever does this? Number six is Greta Gerwig's Barbie. The highest grossing film of the year and the most popular film of the year next to Oppenheimer. This was really good. A movie that is based off of a doll. How do you really do that? I mean, I personally think this movie is like the best way you can really go at it and make it just meta as hell with this character and like all the lore behind Barbie and like how many toys there were that were defunct and uh and just telling a really decent story about humanity and how if we're under a patriarchy then we can't really move on as a size as a society and uh Gerwig's direction is really good it is kind of sad that she didn't get nominated but I but you know I think the other directors were a little more I guess had more uh, flavor for the Oscars, unlike her, but still, there's a lot of effort did really go into this with the production design, which is amazing. Recreating, uh, the, the, the you know the actual toys to life scale models, and I just I really think um, they're really good. But I'm still debating if this or Poor Thing should win for production design because they're both really good and mostly practical, but I. I think I'm just gonna go. I, I really, I do kind of want poor things more, just because of its originality, 
um, and the, the acting from almost everyone in this is great. Margot Robbie is really good as Barbie. Um, the, the Ken actors are great. Ryan Gosling is amazing. Uh, Michael Sarah is really good. Uh, Will Farrell is really hilarious as the Mattel CEO. Um, America Ferrera is, is good. Uh, I don't really like the child actress though. She's not, I, I don't like, I don't know if it's the character or the actress, but it just doesn't, that, that part doesn't work because I don't, uh, that part didn't work, but the, a lot does work well with this movie on a lot of technical and writing aspects, even though the plot is basically just Masters of the Universe from Dolph, the Dolph Lundgren film. When you look, when you really look, think about it, most of the plot details are really, are, are really the same. Even when it comes down to the antagonist of the film, the whole goal is to have the main character as like a, it's, it's a, there's a lot of weird connections I find. <laughs> they're both like, because they're both fish out of water and the antagonist wants the, the attractive blonde hair protagonist, so. But overall, Barbie is amazing comedy drama by a director who I can't wait to see more of what she brings to the table. So coming in at number five is Ari Aster's Bo is Afraid. Uh, so I, li I liked Hereditary. I didn't think it was as scary as everyone said it was, but it was well directed and the acting is good. Uh, Midsommar I did not like at all. Like it looked good, but I just thought the I thought the story was terrible, and I just thought, like, it was way too long. Which is funny, because I really love Bo is Afraid. It's my favorite out of the three, and it's longer than this. But Bo is Afraid never really... It, it, sometimes it drags, but I think most of it is, like, all is fun and, and engaging. But it's a better Truman Show movie than The Truman Show, and it's a great movie about uh, this guy who has lives in this reality where he's been coddled too much by his mom and it's a base it's just a movie that says like the dangers of being over nurtured uh by your mother and how it just kind of affects uh someone's life and it's a great performance by Joaquin Phoenix and I'm glad the Golden Globes actually recognize him for this performance by nominating him in their uh best actor in musical comedy um the other actors are great. Parker Posey, the actress that plays his mom. Um, Bill Hader has a fun cameo. Uh, and Nathan Lane. Holy shit, he's really good. A Amy Adams is also really good. Really good performances. Uh, and uh, Ari Aster, everything in his movies looks really great. And I believe this is A24's highest, uh, like it's, its biggest budget movie that they've ever made and this did really bad but it's it's amazing i love bo's afraid i love its ambition i love its story i love its characters it was briefly my favorite movie of the year but it's not but i still think it's really really solid great comedy uh it replaces i think it really does replace psycho as the best mother's day film so coming in at number four we have wes anderson's asteroid city I'm happy that he got nominated for the uh, Wonderful Life of Henry Sugar, uh, but I wish this got more like, I wish this at least would get production design, maybe even an Oscar nod for Tom Hanks, because he was actually pretty good, and this was like very earned for him after last year with Elvis and Pinocchio not being in his best performances, so could have at least given it, give, give that to him, but all in all, I loved just watching this movie and just... Wes Anderson going all out because I don't know if I said this in my la in my last review of it, but look, Wes Anderson is his like own film franchise because I think like like Asteroid City is not made for regular movie going audiences. Like you have had you you had to have seen a Wes Anderson film like an early Wes Anderson film before going into this one. That's my whole opinion because like for me, yeah, who have seen all previous like 10 films of his I was able to really love this movie but someone who hasn't seen any is just not gonna like it but I think it's amazing I think all the actors are great it's really funny it's everything he's made is everything he makes I think is really funny and the effects by Roman Coppola are great it's just this might be his best looking movie 
that's the, well to be honest i think i like the look of like all of his uh movies from moonrise kingdom till now there i just i love wes anderson so i what what else do i have to really say coming in number three we have yorgos lentimos poor things so uh, i i never seen a lord a yorgos lentimos film um until i watched i watched the lobster um leading up to the film and i fucking love that movie that movie is amazing uh and this movie i don't think it's as good as the lobster but i think it is still funny and uh yes i will admit it is visual and visually better than the lobster because i love the look of this movie the uh, the miniatures the just the, the the costumes it's all great I'm really still debating, like, what should win, this or Barbie, and I'm I'm kind of just leaning towards this just because of its originality. That's why it looks so stellar, and uh, the acting is great from just everyone, uh, from Emma Stone, uh, Mark Ruffalo, Willem Dafoe, I can't remember the other actors' names, the... Uh, they, 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 they're all great, the Yorgos is still great at just making movies, um, the writer is great, Everything about this movie is just great. Uh, just great telling of like the Frankenstein story by while having like a story about uh, you know, understanding what is like what what is the meaning of like what's proper and what's like acceptable. It's all like interesting like perspectives on that topic. It's just it's a fun it's a funny uh, funny quirky comedy that I think more people need to see because I've had a lot of people just turn down this movie because they think it looks too weird, but. That's, I mean, I think we kind of need more weird stuff in Hollywood these days. So coming in number two is David Fincher's The Killer. I love David Fincher, and I really loved just, um, in the fall of 2023, just, I was actually, because, like, for a while, Fincher was a director that I did not really like that much. But after actually, like, sitting through all the movies that he made from 2002 with Panic Room all the way up to Gone Girl, I love all of, every single film that he's made from Panic Room to, to Gone Girl. Uh, Mank, Mank being a little bit of a fluke, uh, still had its good moments. But The Killer, I think, really helps bring him back t uh, to the public, knowing that he is still one of the best, if not the best, director working in Hollywood and this movie is just spectacular. It's still well directed by Fincher. Uh, the the writing and acting by like Michael Fassbender and the writing. I think this is the same writer of Seven. Who I, I'm not a big Seven fan. I'm sorry. I don't really like his like uh, his pre uh, Panic Room stuff that much. But I really do like uh, the writing on uh, how it's like all in the sky. This this assassin's head. And just like seeing his like daily routine and how he goes about things and just how he coordinates things it's just it's just really good and it's just i think like this it, it just it's the best assassin film too like because i think because uh, it's not an action movie that's what's that's what's also so great about it it's, it's it's a thriller there's only one really cool action scene where he like he just fights like a like a big like a bigger guy like in uh, indiana jones i look it's just, it's it's everything that we don't really get from just big Hollywood movies. And Fender just gives us one of the best. And Michael Fassbender is still, uh, this also definitely reminds us that Michael Fassbender is still a terrific actor. Uh, still working today. Even if we all kind of like lost sight of him after those two X-Men movies that weren't so good. He is still uh, one of the best actors working in Hollywood, and also Tilda Swinton and the, the guy from Lost World that's in this. They're they are so great actors. So number one is Godzilla Minus One. This movie is just everything that blockbuster creature features action movies in general need to be reminded of. Last year we had Top Gun Maverick, which... Um, Obviously it was delayed, so this is before like everything in Hollywood had to change. Uh and but that still it kind of it was a good reminder of like how movies really should be and how you should handle old heroes. Uh, Godzilla Minus One, which is now from a foreign country, reminds us how movies what what 
what movies really need to be about, and that is uh, actual characters with struggles overcoming huge these huge obstacles in their life. And Godzilla Minus One is just... Is that that's what it is it's this guy who has to struggle with his inner demons and must fight this creature that has been haunting for most of his life and everything about it is just great the the, the screenplay by this guy who has loved Godzilla so much that he he's put him in one of his one of his early films always sunny on fifth street uh, he it directed the Godzilla ride in uh, Japan, and he even was a visual a VFX artist for Shin Godzilla. And so he was definitely the best pick by Toho to helm this movie and uh, bring back the King of the Monsters again after Shin Godzilla in this phenomenal, phenomenal movie. That great story. It's just great, great visual effects because. It's, I think, this this had a lower budget than the creator, but I think the creator's some, this did have some wonky effects, but I, and I think the creator's still a little bit better, but still, it is still really good effects, and Godzilla looks awesome in this. This is the best looking Godzilla ever, uh, CG wise, it's, I think it's the best, and it's the most medicine looking Godzilla and Godzilla really does again feel like a for like a deadly force of nature as I guess that's what it is now is that uh in Japan Godzilla is bad and here Godzilla is the the savior of the earth I I have my whole thing with I have my thing with Godzilla when it comes to this but um I overall just I think like Godzilla to me personally he shouldn't be a uh like a full out bad guy or even good guy. I just like well, I kind of just want a movie to portray him just as like a regular like animal. But I'm getting a little too off topic. I just think Godzilla minus one is the best movie of this year, just because it's everything that I wanted a movie to be for a while, and I can't really just like it. I can't take it anymore with just how, how bad Hollywood movies can kind of be. This is just what I want, and if you're sick like me, you have to watch Godzilla Minus One. So that is the end of 2023. Um, wasn't big on this year, besides some, there were some good highlights, but I wasn't so impressed by this year, and obviously we had the, the strikes, and uh, 2024 does seem to be looking up. I'm still excited for some stuff. I'm excited for Dune Part 2. Um, I'm excited for uh, Ghostbusters, I'm excited for, I am actually am excited for Deadpool and Wolverine, and even though this is a bit of a dying genre, but there are still some things I'm excited for, and uh, I'm hoping 2024 is a legit better year, even though I don't think someone, I don't, I don't know if we've started off on the best foot yet, but um, I'll see you guys next time.